Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab at Kebab Gaming and unless you are a total mongoloid, you can clearly see that this is a PlayStation 2. Obviously Sega didn't create this machine, but they actually published more games for the PS2 than they did for their own Dreamcast consoles, 140 versus 187. So as there are more Sega games on the PS2 than there are on the Dreamcast, that's now a Sega machine. I don't care about your so-called facts, let's just get on and bask in the glory of some of these Sega gems. And let's do it in alphabetical order. 18 Wheeler is a driving game where you drive a truck. It's actually a port of a Sega arcade game that did actually come out of the Dreamcast too. It's got that Sega arcade charm to it, from the nice chunky graphics to the the aim of each level is nice and simple. You have to get to the goal before the time runs out. You can crash into certain cars to get a time bonus, and you can gain the speed bonus by slipstreaming behind another truck. The difficulty curve from level one to two is pretty damn steep, but it's fun to play, even if the bonus stages overestimate how much fun it thinks you are having. You got the horn! Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. Unless I want a copyright flag from YouTube, I'm going to have to make sure I talk over the music to this game without a single pause. This, of course, is Crazy Taxi, one of the few ports to feature the original music from The Offspring and Bad Religion as Sega changed the songs in later re-releases. Everyone and their mum knows this game, but if you're some sort of Fortnite child gamer, Crazy Taxi is a score attack game where you drive around picking up customers off the street to gain points by quick getting them to where they want to go in this San Francisco inspired city. They might want to go to the Fila store, Tower Records, KFC, Pizza Hut, the Levi store or somewhere that Sega didn't take money from to put into the game. The only complaint I have about this version is the speed boost move you do by pressing the gears and accelerate is harder than it was in the Dreamcast version. Don't know why that is, it just doesn't seem to register all the time or it could be that I'm just crap now. You remember Dynamite Decker right? You might remember the western name for it which was Die Hard Arcade originally on the Sega Saturn as an arcade port, but bought to the PS2 much later in 2006. This is a remaster version of the brilliant Bruce willis -em up You have to beat up various bad guys until you've hospitalised enough people to save the president's daughter. As well as the new remastered version, you also have the Sega Saturn version on here, so you can punch people in the face in all its original pixelated glory. Now here is a game that on paper should be brilliant. Athlete Kings on the Sega Saturn was the best athletics game of its generation. Yes, even better than track and field on the PlayStation. Doesn't matter if you disagree, you're wrong. So all Sega had to do was the same thing they did with Dynamite Decker. Remaster the graphics, slap that baby onto a PS2 disc and watch the money roll in. But no, they couldn't help themselves, they had to mess it up. They created a new game engine and painted models that looked like better versions of the Athlete King's characters into it. They ended up with a game that it looked like it should be good, but was utter pony. Now for the total opposite. This is Fantasy Zone, a timeless classic arcade game from Sega, and another game that Sega thought it would be great if it had a new game engine. Unlike the last game though, Fantasy Zone for the PS2 is a triumph for all involved. The main game plays as it should. It's got a slight makeover to give it that fresh feel, but not too much that it loses its style. So the backgrounds are all in 3D, as are the bases and the bad guys. So too are the level bosses. But the big surprise comes at once you beat an end of level boss and get treated to this coin grab bonus stage. Everything about this title is absolute quality. Fighting Vipers is not based around the underground sport of snake battling. It's actually a rather good one-on-one -on -one Sega arcade fighting game. I play as picky, not just because I like hitting dudes with skateboards, but because I also like Pepsi. There are some subtle clues in this game that Pepsi did a brand deal with this one. We can see Picky Skateboard here, but there's also the sign in the background on one of the stages. Oh, and let's not forget, you can actually play as Pepsi Man. Sticking with fighting games, and there's also a port of the arcade game Last Bronx here on the PlayStation 2 as well. This is a weapons-based fighting game that's a lot of fun. When I look at it, it seems to me that Sega wrote a perfect Model 2 arcade emulator for the PS2. This is why we're getting so many ports of Model 2 arcade games for the system. This game is a bit of a button masher when compared to something like Virtua Fighter, but the graphics were really impressive at the time. 
Do you like Wonder Boy slash Monster World series of games? If you do, then prepare to jizz your pants as on this disc we have Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy Monster Land, Wonder Boy 3 Monster Layer, Monster World 2, Wonder Boy 5, The Monster World 3, and finally, Monster World 4. The games even have their different platform versions. So you have the arcade, Mega Drive, Master System, and Game Gear versions of each game where available. You even have both the Japanese and English language options for each game. Most people think the third game was the best, but most people are wrong. The second game was the best one for many reasons, and one of them is the Dragon Guy in the pubs. Nights into Dreams on the Sega Saturn was an incredible video game and you probably didn't play it so Sega brought it to the PS2 because everyone should play this flying score attack bonanza well everyone who lives in Japan because that's the only place it was released on the PS2 as far as Sega is concerned everyone else can do one which is a shame as this is fantastic play the new buffed PS2 version or even the original Saturn one whatever just don't live outside of Japan if you want to play this on PS2 if you were really into the Sega Saturn but never got into the PS2, then this is going to seem like a bit of a shocker. But the first Pan's Dragoon game actually appears on the PS2 in much the same way these other Saturn games have. You can either play the Saturn version or a buffed PS2 version. Being able to finally use analog sticks to control the crosshair is a revelation and really puts it head and shoulders over the Saturn version. The graphical buff is nice, but the controller improvements are what really makes this shine. Fantasy Star on the Sega Master System was for many the defining game of the console and a remake is much sought after. Well a remake has already been made, it's on the PS2 and you've guessed it, it's a Japanese only release. But thanks to an English fan patched version of the game and my hacked PS3 which can play ISO files, I can now live the dream. From improved manga style intros, a totally reworked UI, lovely graphics, faithful battle system and finally having a map for the dungeon sections this remake is better in every single way over the master system original and i highly recommend it now we have res a game that starts off like and then before you know it You are on a journey through a psychedelic trip out heaven in what loosely could be described as a shoot 'em up. You pass the crosshair over the enemies you want to shoot and then fire. It's quite a lot like Afterburner in that respect, but the rest of the game is totally its own thing. This was on the Dreamcast first, but this PS2 version actually improves the game's visuals, making this the better version of the two. I'd try to describe this game to you, but I think it's just better if I just let the game play on a little, as it's like the Matrix. You can't be told what it is, you just need to see it for yourself. Now we have Sega Rally. I don't mean the 2006 version, there is that too, but it's complete dog. The only Sega Rally game anyone is interested in is this one. Sega Rally Championship 1995 was ported directly from the arcade to the PS2, so it's yet another Sega Model 2 arcade game to add to this growing list. Everyone goes on about how fun the car handling and exciting racetracks are and so on, but I don't think enough praise goes to the game's brilliant rock soundtrack. After this video, go and search on YouTube for Sega Rally OST Conditioned Reflex and tell me that is not an absolute banger. Space Channel 5 is the hardest rhythm action game ever made. This game is a port from the Dreamcast that didn't get any easier when brought to the PS2. You control Ulala and are verbally giving the instructions on what buttons to press. You don't get any visual prompts, you just have to get the timing right with your ears and the game demands almost perfect timing. If like me, you have almost zero rhythm, you are well and truly screwed. It's a shame really, I want to be good at this game, but I'm utter toilet. But this next game is 
is one I'm good at, and that's Virtua Fighter 4. I choose Leon and just demolish everyone. And yes, it's supposed to be pronounced Leon and not Lion. For me, Virtua Fighter is the best one-on-one -on -one fighting game series, period. Street Fighter is close, but not quite, and you can stick your tech in up your ass. You are looking at Virtua Fighter 4 on screen right now, although Sega did release Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution for the PS2 as well, which includes more fighters, tweak fighting mechanics, and a brilliant one-player progression mode. More Virtua Fighter now, and this time it's Virtua Fighter 2. This game was revolutionary when it came out, but it's quite hard to go back to now. This is because from Virtua Fighter 3 onwards, the fighting became a whole lot more fluid, and linking moves together and creating floating combos just felt much better. Virtua Fighter 1 and 2 both feel very rigid and old now, but at least the music in this game still sounds great. The final Virtual Fighter of a game on this list, and it's something a bit special. Not special as in Special Olympics, but as in a real oddity. This is Virtua Fighter 10th anniversary. It looks like the first game, but really it's Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution, but wearing Virtua Fighter 1 clothes. It's the gameplay characters and game engine from Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution, but the character models and stage graphics have been swapped out for the Virtua Fighter 1 versions. This is a lot of fun to play, and I actually prefer to have a go at this rather than break out an actual copy of Virtua Fighter 1. Another game in the Virtua series, and it's this, Virtua Quest, a JRPG which, for reasons that are still unclear to me to this very day, features the cast of Virtua Fire alongside the standard sort of anime JRPG characters you'd expect to see in a JRPG. The reason why I don't actually know much about this game is whenever I decide to play it, this happens. Treasure hunting experience. I think it'd be better if you go to the hunter site and get a hunter's license first. A hunter's license? The Hunters Guild's an organization created to help you and fellow hunters out with things. They issue you a hunter's license when you become a guild member. Yeah, I don't want to play this. I do want to play this though. This is Virtua Racing Flat Out, a tweaked version of 1992's Virtua Racing. Now with better shadows, a faster rain rate, as well as many other improvements. Virtua Racing has always been great fun to play, and personally, I think this is better than the arcade original. Hardcore Sega fans may want to burn me at the stake for that comment, but they need to face facts. This is the better game. One last Virtua game, and it's only the greatest tennis game ever made, it's Virtua Tennis. It's smooth, it handles like a dream. Outside of that though, there's not really a lot to say about this game. It's tennis, and even if you don't like tennis in real life, you'll probably still enjoy this game, because it's fun. It's tennis, you don't need a long drawn out explanation. It's tennis! The last game on this video is everybody's favourite Japanese gangster em up, Yakuza. You know Yakuza, it's fighting dudes, running around, an anime tier storyline and mini games. The noteworthy thing about the first game in the series, which was on the PS2, is just that it's the only game in the series to have an English dub. Not sure why they didn't do it for the other games, as the voice actors in this are actually pretty good. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.